You've been referred to our Brian Hart Structural Heart Program to begin an evaluation of your heart valve disease and possible mitral regurgitation. Your heart beats thousands of times per day, pumping dozens of gallons of blood each hour. It pumps blood through your lungs, where the blood is replenished with oxygen, and it pumps it back out to the rest of your body. The heart has four chambers. The upper two chambers are called the left atrium and the right atrium, and the lower two are called the left ventricle and the right ventricle. Heart valves are the doorways between these chambers. They open to let blood pass from one chamber to the next, closing quickly between heartbeats so the blood does not flow backward. The mitral valve is the valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle of your heart. In a normally functioning mitral valve, blood flows in a single direction between the left atrium and the left ventricle. When your mitral valve's two leaflets or flaps do not close properly, some blood flows backward through the valve back into the left atrium. This is called mitral regurgitation or MR. To compensate and keep blood flowing through the body, the left ventricle pumps harder. This strain can lead to other heart complications. Symptoms of mitral regurgitation can include shortness of breath, fatigue, coughing, lightheadedness, swollen feet or ankles, and excessive urination. Left untreated, mitral regurgitation may lead to congestive heart failure and eventually death. There are two different types of mitral regurgitation, primary and secondary. Depending on the type of mitral regurgitation you have, it can be related to a variety of causes such as age, a valve abnormality from birth, heart disease, coronary artery disease, a history of rheumatic fever, or radiation exposure during cancer treatments. Treatment of your mitral regurgitation depends on how severe it is and how sick you are. There are medications available to reduce symptoms, such as fluid buildup in the lungs, but no medications address the underlying problem with your mitral valve. Mitral regurgitation itself can only be treated in two ways, mitral valve surgery or transcatheter mitral valve repair. You will be evaluated by a team at Brian Hart to determine which option is right for you. There are two types of surgery to treat primary or degenerative mitral regurgitation, mitral valve repair or mitral valve replacement. Repair of the natural valve is preferred over replacement. If the valve cannot be repaired, it is replaced using an artificial valve. While open heart surgery is an effective treatment for mitral regurgitation, your doctor may suggest an alternative treatment due to your age, advanced heart failure, or other serious medical conditions. Transcatheter mitral valve repair, TMVR, is a minimally invasive procedure that may be an option for patients who are too sick for surgery. Unlike surgery, this procedure does not require opening the chest, but rather a small catheter inserted into the right leg vein and threaded up into the heart. In this procedure, a clip will be implanted onto the center of your mitral valve. This reduces mitral regurgitation and the valve continues to open and close on either side of the clip, allowing blood to flow through. To decide if this surgery is right for you, we need a lot of information about you, your heart, and your general health. Once we have gathered all the needed information, we will discuss all your treatment options. To give us a complete picture of you and your health, you will need the following tests. Transesophageal echocardiogram, or TEE, is an echocardiogram where an ultrasound or sound waves are used to make an image of your heart. During a transesophageal echo, a physician inserts a narrow tube with a small probe into your mouth and down your esophagus. This allows the doctor to record images of your heart from the inside, providing images closer to your heart. Coronary angiogram, or heart catheterization, checks your heart and blood vessels. A catheter is inserted into a blood vessel in your leg or arm, then guided into your heart. Once in place, x-ray dye is injected through the catheter. This dye helps the heart and blood vessels show up more clearly on x-rays taken throughout the exam. During this test, your doctor may place additional catheters in your heart to measure the pressure in different areas of your heart. Non-contrast CT scan of the chest. You will lie on a table that moves into a scanner. The scanner will take detailed pictures of your blood vessels, heart, and lungs. This will give the doctor a picture of your heart and evaluate for any concerns for fluid buildup in the lungs. Pulmonary function test, or PFT, 
is a breathing test that measures how well your lungs are working and how efficiently they are transferring oxygen to the rest of your body. Carotid Dopplers are ultrasounds of the arteries in your neck. These ultrasounds are used to look for any blockages or narrowed arteries due to plaque buildup. Venous Duplex is an ultrasound that shows how the blood is moving through the veins in your legs. The physician is using this information to look for any blockages or narrowed veins in this area. Once you have completed all of the workup, your individual case and testing results will be reviewed by the Brian Hart Structural Heart Team, a multidisciplinary team of experts including cardiothoracic surgeons, interventional cardiologists, invasive cardiologists, advanced practice providers, and nurses. As with any procedure, there are risks and benefits that each individual needs to evaluate personally. The risks of mitral valve surgery are bleeding, vascular complications, stroke, and death. Benefits to undergoing mitral valve surgery include improvement of symptoms and improved quality of life. If you decide that mitral valve surgery is right for you, you can expect the following as part of the recovery process. A 24-hour stay in the hospital following the procedure. The dressing on the incision site will be removed within 24 hours. Showering will be allowed 24 hours after the procedure, but no tub bathing or submerging of the incision site for at least two weeks. No lifting more than 10 pounds for the next three days, then no lifting restrictions following that. At Brian Hart, we put the patient first by involving you in your care. Our structural heart team is here to support you with any questions or concerns you may have during this time.